My name is Pastor Steve Edmiston. I'm the pastor here at St. Paul Lutheran Church near Genera, Ohio. We gather once again to be together, even though we can't be together. We continue and today conclude our series of midweek Lenten services as we come together and, and meet people who live in Jesus' neighborhood. That is, individuals who encounter our Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospels. And we learn how Jesus shows us that we can love our neighbors. We'll also be learning a little bit from the most famous neighbor we have here in the United States, Mr. Rogers. But it is good for us to be together even here in this moment. Uh, an announcement I need to make is that we will not be able to be together for worship on Palm Sunday. And so once again, if you would like to take video of you or your children or your family doing things to celebrate Palm Sunday with palm branches or things like that, please email me the video so that we can try to put something together for our Palm Sunday procession. But we've gathered now for our midweek Lenten service, and we begin in prayer. O oh God of goodness and mercy, as we enter into this time of Lent with you, let us discover a new neighborhood of love and concern. You have given the human race Jesus Christ, our Savior, as a model of humility. He fulfilled your will by becoming one of us, and giving his life on the cross. Help us to bear witness to you by following his example of suffering and make us worthy to share in his resurrection. Amen. <coughs> Our reading this evening comes to us from the 19th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man there named Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short of stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. The Gospel of our Lord. As we walk our Lenten road together, let us pause and speak of God's love. Today we are in the neighborhood of Jericho, famous in the Old Testament for walls that fell down to Joshua and the Israelites after seven days of marching. This time, we are in that neighborhood with Jesus and the disciples right before the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Jesus' encounter today is his last one before he enters in triumph on Palm Sunday. Today, we meet Zacchaeus, a wee little man that we all learned the song about in Sunday school. And in the song, the fact that he's short is important. But in the Bible story, it's just a minor joke. The fact that Zacchaeus has to climb a tree to see Jesus just adds a, a little insult to a man who thought a great deal of himself. You see, more important than his height is the fact that Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. 
You see, tax collectors were never well-liked, but people like Zacchaeus were universally hated. You see, they were Jews who had been contracted by Rome to collect taxes and tolls for the empire. So, these men fraternized with the enemy Rome, and then in order to make their jobs even more profitable, they would cheat and extort extra money from their fellow Jews. You see, they were more than just unliked, they were despised. And so here is Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus has heard that Jesus is coming. And so like the woman with the hemorrhage we spoke of a few weeks ago, Zacchaeus is, is hoping to see Jesus. He wants to see the man. Now Zacchaeus has no, no plans to touch Jesus' cloak, but he does want to see him. See, I believe that Zacchaeus has heard of Jesus, has heard his message of love for neighbors, has heard of Jesus' care, and the feedings, the, the cures, and the teachings, and he wants to see him. I think Zacchaeus wants to know that he's real. You see, I believe that Zacchaeus is looking for a change in his life. Now, I don't know if hearing Jesus came first, or if the quest to see Jesus is because he was looking for someone to talk to about this idea. See, no one wanted to talk to Zacchaeus. See, he was an enemy. He had swindled. He was working with and for the enemy. No one even wanted to be seen with Zacchaeus unless it was absolutely necessary. So if you're Zacchaeus and you're pondering a major shift in your life and you want to talk, to whom could he turn? So he wanted to make sure that Jesus was real. But it wasn't just something people were making up or talking about. He wanted to see if Jesus looked like someone who might be willing to talk to the likes of him. See, Zacchaeus was even willing to risk running in public and being a grown man in a tree just to see Jesus. See, he was hoping that his, his newly found feelings of compassion might lead him to an encounter with this man who saw calling the Messiah. So imagine Zacchaeus' surprise when Jesus stops below him, hiding in that tree. And instead of mocking him, instead of ridiculing him, instead of leading the crowd in laughing at Zacchaeus, Jesus invites himself to Zacchaeus' house. Imagine the delight. Imagine the nerves. Imagine what it could be like to meet a hero. A man loved by many. So Zacchaeus climbs down and leads Jesus to his home in joy. Now, if you've seen the Oscar-nominated movie, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, you saw how Lloyd Vogel, who was inspired by real-life journalist Tom Junot, a magazine author, was asked to interview Fred Rogers for a magazine issue dealing with heroes. In fact, when he tells her, Lloyd's wife asks him not to ruin her childhood since Lloyd is an investigative journalist known to discover dirt on people he's writing about. So Lloyd goes to see Mr. Rogers, looking to see a man who's playing a character. 
And instead, Lloyd meets a man trying very hard to be exactly the kind of neighbor he is encouraging in all of us. Lloyd's encounter with Mr. Rogers helps him as he's dealing with difficulties around his own father, a father who had abandoned his mother as he was growing up. He's wrestling with his own fatherhood and then what it means to forgive if forgiveness is even possible. Lloyd's encounter with Mr. Rogers shows Fred Rogers living out one of his favorite quotes. The quote is, there isn't anyone you couldn't love once you've heard their story. You see, Jesus goes to Zacchaeus' house to hear his story. See, the crowds were grumbling about Jesus going to be with sinners, while Jesus and Zacchaeus were almost skipping to his house. You see, Zacchaeus had an opportunity to talk with, to listen to this one who lives a love for neighbors like no one else. Now, we don't know the whole story that Zacchaeus tells. We don't get to hear all of it, but we do hear the aftermath. We hear how Zacchaeus is changing his life. Half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. Now, this may not be the sell all you have and give it to the poor that Jesus says to a rich young man just a few chapters earlier. But it is something that Zacchaeus is doing. He's not muttering about it as he leaves like that same rich young man. Zacchaeus is doing this. He also promises to pay those he defrauded four times more. Even though in the Old Testament it says that 20% is all that is required. See, Zacchaeus has had... A change of heart. A change of heart that if it was not inspired by Jesus and his life and teaching, that it was encouraged and supported by Jesus and his life and teaching. Zacchaeus began to realize that what we have is less important than what we make out of what we have. Zacchaeus decided that he wanted to make neighbors and not enemies. He wanted sisters and brothers and not patsies to be fleeced. Jesus encourages this new lifestyle and speak of salvation coming to this house. Now the salvation that came to Zacchaeus is not because he promised to give to the poor and pay back those defrauded. Those promises came as a result of the salvation. Zacchaeus is not buying his way into heaven, but rather he's recognizing God's love even for the likes of him. And now he wants to share that love. He wants to love his neighbor. You see, in visiting Zacchaeus, Jesus is recognizing his humanity and announcing his status as neighbor, saying that Zacchaeus is a son of Abraham and showing Zacchaeus as a child of God. Jesus wants the crowds those grumbling crowds upset that Jesus is even with Zacchaeus. He wants them to see that he, Jesus, came to seek out people like Zacchaeus, who were lost, who were the outsider, the despised. Jesus came to show that God's love is for all of us. 
God loves us when we are faithful and when we are faithless. God loves us when we are lost and alone and when we are part of the family and living in the neighborhood. God's love is a source of hope for all of us, all the time. Jesus wants us to recognize that we should not be quick to judge one another harshly. You see, we find fault in others much more quickly than we are ready to recognize our own faults. Jesus comes to forgive and to transform us, all of us, so that we will truly discover ways to love our neighbor. So then, let us learn from Jesus, from Zacchaeus, from Mr. Rogers, and Lloyd, and Tom, and even from one another. Let us love our neighbor and help this world to become beautiful. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in prayer. O oh God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer as we walk this Lenten road with you. Let us be honest as we look into our hearts and souls, noticing the times we turn away from you. Guide us as we humbly seek to repent and return to your love. May humility guide our efforts to be reconciled with you and live forever in your abundant grace. Transform us this Lent, Heavenly Father. Give us the strength to commit to grow closer to you each day. O loving God, your heart overflows with compassion for your whole creation. Pour out your spirit on all people dealing with illness, as well as their families their loved ones. Help them to know that you claim them as your own and deliver them from fear and pain. Gracious God, it is good for us to gather as your beloved in community. We treasure your presence with us in word and meal, in song and prayer. Be with us in these days when gathering together as often as we would like is not possible when we must be apart for reasons of safety, we trust that you surround us with your sheltering wings. Encourage us in connecting as we are able, reaching out to our neighbors in need and being persistent in prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for those in need. Protect those who are lonely and alone. Unburden those who are weighed down by guilt or shame. Assist those who are unemployed, comfort those who mourn, and heal the sick. We pray especially for these who are known to us. We pray for Ted, Joyce, Penny, Corbin, Peyton, Jamie, Mark, Nick, Justin, Matt, Logan, Colin. Ben and Kyle. O oh God, our refuge and strength, our present help in time of trouble, care for those who tend the needs of the sick. Strengthen them in body and spirit. Refresh them when weary, console them when anxious, comfort them in grief, and hearten them in discouragement. Be with us all, and give us peace at all times and in every way. Dear Lord, we now pause to pray for those we know who need your presence and now name in our hearts. Lord, grant us simplicity of faith and generosity of service that gives without counting costs. 
a life overflowing with grace poured out from the one who gave everything, that we might show the power of love to a broken world and share the truth from a living word. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the God of grace and glory go with you as you follow this Lenten path. Wherever it takes you, and to whomever it takes you, may you go with the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. So once again, I remind you that we will not be able to be together here at St. Paul Church on Palm Sunday. We will try to still be together spiritually and, and as we are able. But be careful. Take care. Stay as apart as you need so we don't spread this disease to anyone. It is time for us now to go with Christ into the world to celebrate, live, and share. And I just remind you all to stay warm, stay dry, stay safe, be healthy. And we will see each other another time.